The recent spike in prices of crude oil all around the world has caused grave problems for both economies and the general public. As a result of this price hike, goods have also increased in price, and experts like Raul Paul believe that the worst is yet to come. Join us in today's video as we examine the reasoning behind all this and why there is great fear of another recession. Using that macro framework that you build, where are we right now? What is your current outlook? I know we got a, a great presentation that you're going to walk us through, but really curious to hear your thoughts because I know you have some pretty strong ideas right now. Yeah, so the market is currently obsessed by inflation. It's in, it obsessed by the central banks. It's obsessed by interest rates going super high. We saw Bill Act coming out today, yesterday saying, you know, it, it, in, interest rates need to go up to the moon. I step back from the narrative and start looking at, okay, what is the reality of that? And I think the reality is, and I'll show it in the presentation, that what we've actually done is utterly destroy demand already. We've had the largest rate of change of interest rates in history, the largest rate of change of commodities in history. Um, we've had the largest rate of change of mortgage rates, all sorts of stuff, a very perky dollar as well, a strong dollar. That makes a big difference to this. Those things tend to be financial conditions tightening. We can see it in the equity market. We can see it in the housing market. You can see it in the crypto market is conditions have tightened dramatically. The market's still looking at the previous CPI prints, and CPI is a lagging indicator. The forward-looking stuff of the business cycle is collapsing. And that's interesting to me because that fits with my secular framework, which is disinflationary, slower growth over time, um, with this aging population, demographics, all of this stuff all coming together. So that's why I'm really paying attention right now. I think the market's probably wrong. And I think that it's going to set up for a whole bunch of opportunities as the Fed pivot fast. And the economy goes into recession much quicker than anybody expects. Every day, the world becomes more and more unfavorable. As a result, the overall demand is in severe decline. Buyers are complaining about rising prices for petrol, food, and metals. And this is a factor that threatens to push economies back into a recession. In a podcast with Delphi Media, Raul Paul, a former chief fund manager at Real Vision and a co-founder of the company, also expresses his opinion. The financial markets anticipate that the Federal Reserve will raise its benchmark interest rate within the next month and the month after that to take vigorous action against inflation. At this point, Many people believe that an economic downturn is all but inevitable. And lately, many specialists and economists like Paul no longer think that the roaring inflation will only alleviate if the market goes into a full-on collapse. It's becoming more likely because of the Fed's actions at the moment. According to Paul, the aggregate demand has already been wiped out, which has a severe negative impact on the business cycle and will eventually lead to the inevitability of a recession. Paul also voiced concerns about the cryptocurrency market, which is already experiencing significant stress, stating that the next four to six months will be critical for the cryptocurrency sector. The situation will continue for a considerable time if the regulation or adoption of cryptocurrencies does not occur. So what is the shoe to drop for this cycle? I think the shoe is the economy, like 1974, and it's not a financial event, more an economic event, and probably the US consumer event. Now, in 2008, the Fed discovered the new trick, which was the balance sheet. Now, if you understand the balance sheet as you expand it, automatically makes the S&P and other risk assets reprice higher because the denominator's fallen. That stopped the rot because the collateral in the system goes up in price and everything kind of resets. And every time the Fed have used the balance sheet since, it's had exactly the same impact, which is an immediate um, turn in asset prices. It had an immediate turn once it was used in 2009. It had an immediate turn when it was used in, um, in the pandemic. And it had an immediate turn when it stopped, you know, when, when the market started to sniff it out in 2018. I don't see any reason why the Fed won't do it again. So I'm anticipating a short, very sharp recession and a return to use of the Fed balance sheet 
direct transfer payments to give money directly to poorer people, um, and the Fed having to support some parts of the markets again. Um, but let's see how it plays out. The main point being is we've got the worst ahead of us. It's not fully priced in by markets. It's going to be faster than people expect. It's going to be more severe than people expect. And then we can look out looking forwards. So that's my pretty horrific story from here. How does, it, how, how does it play out for stuff like crypto? Well, the crypto story is still amazing, right? The crypto story is still a technological adoption curve. It's still Metcalfe's law. It's a slow year for adoption. But adoption's actually been sideways. People haven't left the crypto ecosystem like they did in 2018, which is why we've had a much more of a sloppy sideways range. And I think that adoption continues. And if it continues this way, you know, by the, end, by the, eight, by the time we get to 2030, we end up with 5 billion people or 4 billion people using crypto. This chart's actually been updated since. And we found that the rate of adoption was even faster. Last year, we had a, about 186% rate of adoption. You can see what that's like compared to the internet. Overall, it's, it's about twice the speed of internet adoption. And that's truly extraordinary. And it tells us that going forwards, even though the internet, as it becomes a more adopted network, the rate of growth comes down, but the numbers become huge. And that's what's important to the valuation of the market cap of crypto. So again, if we look at the, these updated numbers, even if we assume some slowdown, whether it slows down by the same percentage change that the internet did after year six, starting at 5 million users, took year six after that, it started slowing down to 43%. If we adjust it by the same amount, we get to 76% growth in crypto. We still get to 2.8 billion users in the next four years. If we slow it down to match that of the internet, we get 1.2 billion users. Um, and the internet at that stage was at 500 million. So you can see the dramatic increase. And this is what increases the value of crypto. This is Metcalfe's law. This is network adoption. And what's, what we're also finding is technology, each one at a time, comes at a faster speed. So Bitcoin's adoption was extremely rapid. Ethereum has been much more rapid. And I think some of the other layer ones like Solana have been even more rapid than Bitcoin. And I expect that to continue because... The base layer was there. Bitcoin was adopted so fast because the internet had, um, existed. Ethereum ex um, was adopted so fast because Bitcoin had um, existed and had been adopted. And the same with the other layer ones. Same with NFTs, which were even faster in adoption. If we think of the value accretion to the Board 8 Yacht Club, for example, it's probably the fastest value accretion to any asset in all history. It's about 250,000% in a year which is truly extraordinary. So that's kind of what's going on. And if network adoption models are the key models, I've spent a long time looking at this because a lot of people still don't really understand it. And I thought, how can I model this in a way that makes sense to an idiot like me? Because Metcalfe's law is a complicated formula where we don't have the simple inputs so that we can just put it into a model. So I went through all of the different things on chain and the various factors and found that I could best describe the price action of Bitcoin via looking at the total transaction volumes in dollar terms versus the number of active addresses. And that makes total sense. A network of two people transacting a billion dollars a week is nice, but it's not a network. But the same billion dollars a week transacted by a billion people is incredibly valuable. So Bitcoin transacts more volumes than anything else, and it has a lot of active addresses. And what's amazing is the two charts, even though the numbers are wildly different, the two charts mirror each other perfectly. It tells you that price is actually a great indicator of network adoption. So it doesn't give you a lead, and I'm working on rate of change models and other things to give us some leads on this. But generally, it tells you cryptos are generally well-priced. By the market. It's very efficient in what it does. Now, don't, don't forget, price is not an input in, in the model, and it works for every single crypto asset I've ever looked at. So here's Ethereum. It works perfectly too, exactly the same. And it works for, I've, I've seen it in all sorts of things from Polkadot through to XRP. People don't want to believe that. They want to believe that crypto is all about 
network adoption models that are unique to that particular crypto. No, it's the narrative that builds the network and the utility of the network, but they're all priced in the same way. So NetNet, how does this all come together? It all comes together in what I think is a dramatic risk off that happens over the next four to five weeks, much like the end of 2018. Those of you from the crypto markets will remember Bitcoin fell 50% over that period and put in the low. I think we're starting to see that kind of scary price action. The equity market as of today is has put in a DMARC indicator daily low, but this is around the month-end rebalance effects, and we know the month-end rebalance is going to be one of the largest ever, meaning pension funds to rebalance their portfolios have to buy a lot of equities. They're doing that. They probably need to get it done before of the, the long weekend in the United States. After that, I think crypto is telling us it's all going to roll over again, and we'll see the big sell-off. I expect bond yields to continue to rally as they start pricing in the probability that the Fed have to pivot, and the economy's gone too far, and inflation is broken. I then would love to see oil break. I'm not 100% sure of that one, but I think it's likely. It's mapping very, very well oil in 2001. And oil in 2001, almost identical price action. You can overlay the charts and it collapsed 45%, uh, much like it did in 2018. So I think that's probably coming. That changes the narrative. And eventually the Fed, sometime in the summer, are going to go, and it's probably after the June meeting, they're probably going to go, okay, we'll monitor the situation and maybe we won't um, tighten the balance sheet yet. That signal is the signal for risk assets, I believe. And I think we'll see growth end of tech, which has been utterly destroyed and is down 70% plus, and crypto, and probably gold actually, start to outperform along with bonds. And those should be the phoenix that rise from the ashes and some of these other more cyclical plays will do less well those are the things that have been outperforming over the last 18 months. The big question is, what is it going forwards? Is this going to be a longer recession, in which case everything rallies and then comes back down again? The Fed have to do a lot more. Is that what brings the Fed balance sheet in? Is the markets roll over and the economy looks terrible? I'm not sure. My, best, my base case scenario is a V-shaped recovery from a, from a absolute cliff edge. Um, but it could be something more drawn out, in which case we've got a much nastier equity bear market to come. But we'll wait and see. So it's a pretty grim prognosis, but I think this is the opportunity I've been looking for. I've been buying technology stocks gradually on a dollar cost average basis over the last couple of months. Um, I will probably go out another month and that will give me hopefully this whole low period if I get this right. Um, the weekly DMARC indicators give us between two and four weeks for this load to come in. Crypto is identical right now. We've got, we've got the bad signal of we need the dailies to get where we're going, and that's probably another week or 10 days away of this kind of price action that we've been seeing, which is pretty ugly. And the weekly indicators are somewhere between two weeks and five weeks away before we get the final capitulation lows. It was that DMARC setup that got me out of being short or out of my shorts and out of many trades in the um, pandemic as well. Um, and I take them very seriously because they usually lead to very good signals. So that's whole, my whole view in a nutshell. What do you guys think of Rawpol's ideas? Do you agree that we are again on the verge of an economic collapse? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, kindly like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.